Oh, there are many things. How many is many? Well, there's one last now. Well, yeah. I just bounced I off a jumbo shit. Japanese tigers. That was a wall. There's like there's gotta be at least like four. Oh my god. Ah, oh, I ricocheted off the fucking underside bit. This is hilarious. They just can't do anything against me. Oh my good god. There are... Are you, are you here? There's like seven of them. I'm making my way up behind them. Me and a panther. Because if we can do that, then... They've, they've lost. Straight up, they have lost if we get up behind them. I've bounced like th probably th upwards of 30 shells. I'm just like Damn. reverse side scraping around a corner. Another one down, another one down, another one by the dust. Oh, the jumbo got my gun. I'm actually amazed that it took them that long. So, the Tiger H1 has been lowered to BR 5.3 in realistic battles. And, um, as you'll know, I'm mainly a top tier player, but I had to get on this shit and have a go. Because I never thought it was bad at 5.7. In fact, I know it's not the same one, but the Japanese Tiger, um, the premium Japanese Tiger, I used that in Sim to grind out almost the entire Japanese tree, um, right up until the STB, which I put a talisman on to finish off the rest of the uh, tanks. But um, in Sim, that thing faces basically what this sees in 5.3. There's there's nothing that's really too much of a bother for it. I think the only thing that made the Tiger bad at 5.7 was the particularly strong potent 6.7s. So we're talking the Brits with their APDS, the American like super heavies like the T29 and you know that kind of thing, T32, T34 and um, anything that had heat but they were all 5.7 as well, so now that this is uh, 5.3 the only thing that it sees with heat is the ASU-85 which is made out of tissue paper and the PT-76 which is made out of wet tissue paper so yeah, it, it's, it's full on boost mode and I know that a lot of people have been thinking oh it's 5.3 that means it'll club 4.3s I mean yeah it, it does. It, it quite efficiently clubs 4.3s. But its real strength isn't that it gets to club stuff in a down tier. It's that it doesn't get clubbed in an up tier. And um, I don't think it needed this PR change. But I'm not complaining that it's had it. So you'll have seen in the intro clip on um, Advance of the Rhine that it was pretty good at just bouncing everything. Like if you uh, if you angle this thing correctly, then um, there's not really anything with a conventional round at this BR that will pen you. Um, I think maybe the KV2 and the uh, SU152 might have a chance of overmatching your armour at, uh, at dodgy angles, maybe stuff like the IS-2 as well, anything with a 122. But um, on the whole, the 
if you just angle, if you like use the um, use one of the front corners of the tank and like if you point your gun over that and then point that at the enemy, you're pretty much good. Um, and sometimes even when stuff shoots you like a face on, if they get the angle even slightly wrong, like you've got that little lip below your uh, main frontal plate and your turret is covered in odd little divots and the armor is just so, so trolly. Um, and if you play your cards right and you get a little bit lucky then you manage to go on these epic tears. I think that I get 10 kills in this game and um, in that game on Advance the Rhine. I didn't do super well but uh, I just thought it was an impressive display of how good this thing is at just tanking damage because I didn't take a single damaging hit until my gun got knocked out. And uh, as a top tier player it's quite funny coming back down here because top tier the entire meta is just shoot for cannon breach, shoot for gun barrel. And if you ever take a shot and get hit, it's almost always on the gun. Like I'm if you get shot, gun's out. That's just how it works at top tier. So for me to be able to just sit there tank all those shots and uh, I think I took three guys out on that main road um, and none of them shot my gun right up until the last um, that last guy who took it out and I just backed off and repaired if they'd all just been doing that from the start I don't think I'd have been uh, anywhere near as effective as I was but uh, down here at 5.3 to 6.3 there's just no there's no cannon breach or gun breach, uh, gun barrel matter, because it's very rare that you encounter something that doesn't have a weak spot that you can just kill by panning in one hit anyway. I think maybe if you're playing the Brits you might be more likely to go for the uh, the gun than anything else just because you don't have any explosive fill around. But um, yeah, it's, it's just a huge huge difference from uh, playing top tier. And <laughs> having HE filler at when you're used to firing darts at people, it's so nice to just be able to like pan the turret basket or the turret and just end everything in, in one shot. There's, there's just something really deeply satisfying about APHE rounds. And uh, it did make me kind of miss the old days when I was grinding through this and I might I might come down to this too more often. I'm really not sure how this guy doesn't kill me because I haven't I haven't looked at the uh, the stats for the target for a while but I'm pretty sure that the turret armor is less than 70 mil which is how much pen he has. So unless he was using pure HE belts I'm, I'm just baffled. He, he didn't even damage me. I think he knocked a little bit of a track off or an optic out or something on the side of my turret. Felt a little bit bad for him. That was like classic battlefield head glitch kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of shooting. The, uh, the turret traverse can let the, t the tiger down a little bit and uh, also I just uh, I just remembered this but did it always have smoke grenades because I swear blind it used to only be the tiger really that got smoke and uh, the first thing I noticed when I went back to the H1 for this video was it has smoke now was that added when the BR was lowered or has it had it for ages I thought that the whole um, the whole point of the Tiger E being better was that it had like a few little bit of added armor plates. It has an APCR round, which, you know, on paper that's meant to be good, but as we all know, it's useless. And um, and it gets smoke. But the Tiger H1 gets smoke, and that's the one notable difference over uh, over the other one. So if they both have it now, why would you ever play the A if you can play the H1 at 
The only problem that I had was that there isn't really a good lineup to have with the Targo H4-5.3 because everything that compares with it well is 5.7. You've got the Panther D and the Panther A, which are both 5.7. And the only other things that are 5.3 are tank destroyers. Otherwise you're going to end up bringing in like Panzer IV F2s which are all like, what, 3-3, three, three, um, 3 7 and 4 -0 depending on the model um, and that's quite a big gap isn't it like uh, 4 out to 5.3 that's like the entire bracket so I ended up bringing in the flat panzer the uh, panzer 470 and the Sturo meal because I've never actually played it so I crewed it for this and then I actually ended up never using it because the target is just so fucking broken good at 5.3 that uh, I didn't die enough to need to spot anything else. See, that's uh, top tier ruined me for that shot, because at, uh, at top tier I wouldn't have had to adjust my aim for range at that distance at all. At the time of doing this, I couldn't tell if this guy was trying to hide from me or if he just didn't know I was there. Because not engaging a target when you're in a uh, ZSU-37 is actually quite smart. Because he would have to do very well to win an engagement. But the fact that he wasn't actually pointing his gun at me. Um, I think he just d didn't have a clue I was there. Not enough lead. Again, at top tier, you can just point and click at this range on this map. You, you never have to really think about it at all. That was a terrible shot, but uh, angle the hull. He yeah, actually, that was a pretty good shot on his part. See the front of the turret. I was angling the turret a little bit, but I didn't think that it had, uh, he'd pan me that easily. Although, since I was a, uh, a low tier, mid tier player, the, um, the ammo changes have been brought in up and then, so the, uh, the Hellcat actually has like 20 something, nearly 30 more pan now. But there you go, 10 kills, 2 assists, top of the team, and we're going to cap out before I can get anything else and there was only one penetrating hit against me in that entire game. We've captured most of the strategic zones. So in summary, I don't think the tiger needed to be down to it. I think 5.7 was perfectly fine for it, especially with it having such a good lineup surrounding it. But it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't think it's too overpowered. I think that it comes down to the player using it largely. There's still plenty of things that can pan it. Um, all the American 76s can punch through with ease. Everything that the Brits have got can punch through with ease. The French AP flingers. It's good. It's not overpowered, broken, but it is a hell of a lot of fun to use. Thanks a lot for watching, folks, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.